everybody, this is Abby, and I am hanging out with one of the coolest guys that I know. And you're thinking, who is that? I'm going to tell you who it is. I'm hanging out with Roy Samuelson. And who is that, you say? He is an audio descriptive narrator who I'm crazy about. He is just awesome. And he's done so much work, and he's totally, totally, totally fun to watch movies with and talk things. And boy, I've just had the best time this morning hanging out and chatting. How are you today? I'm doing great, Abby. Thanks so much for having me. This is cool. You've taught me so much about audio description and like what it means to you and what it is. So can you be share it with others? Because I want everybody to know like what we've talked about. Yeah. Audio description is a way for a narration track uh, that you listen to talking about what's happening on screen. So the visual elements of a movie or a TV show, and it's a way to bring access to those to someone who might be blind or low vision or other people who might not be uh, looking at the screen right now. And let me tell you guys, it's super exciting for me because you know, I'm into everything and I mean everything. So when I got to actually watch this movie and know what's happening and not having, having to interrupt my friends, I'm like, Oh my gosh, what's happening now? Because there's like, you know, the visual scene and gosh, what you do really brings it to life. Can you talk about how you make that happen? Sure. Uh, so it's it's a big process. It's not just me. Uh, there's uh, audio description has been around for decades, believe it or not. And now it's at the point where companies bring in a special writer who uh, writes a special audio description script based on what's happening on screen. And uh, I, I don't get involved in the writing. It's a it's a really specialized skill. And those people bring the uh, the script to life by watching the movie or the TV show, and they sometimes get a shooting script. So there's a lot of research that's done even before it's in my hands. And uh, people look it over, make sure it's edited right, make sure the timing is right so that uh, when I get the script that I know when to come in in between lines of dialogue. There's all sorts of really specific decisions that are made before it even gets to me. And then when I get it, I read a, a script into a mic and uh, sometimes I'm directed and, and told what to do uh, as far as the, making sure I'm matching the emotional tone of the scene. And then it's edited and mixed and uh, sent out to uh, along with the movie or TV show. That for you is like art to me. You know why? Because I have this, you know, obviously friends that I can see and a friend of mine that used to be able to see and she can't see now. And, you know, she's comparing like what it was like to watch a movie before, like when she could see, because there's so many takes to it. and. You had mentioned, like, like we had talked about this too, the picture is worth a thousand words, which is so stuck with me. And getting the right narration into that to bring a piece to life when there's so much going on in those clips has to be really, like, is it crazy hard to do? Well, I bring a lot of my voiceover experience to audio description. So it is called audio description narration, but... What I like to do, there's a, there's a bunch of training that I've had for voiceover work, whether it's commercial work or doing video games or animation or even taking an improv class or a, an acting class that helps inform what I bring to audio description. So yeah, I'm a narrator, but I'm playing the role of uh, your friend that's sitting next to you and making sure that I'm not getting in the way of the story. And what I try to do is make sure I'm bringing that emotional nuance to the scene so that I don't get in the way, that you can stay fully immersed in it. So in that sense, yeah, it is a, a, an art and a craft, arts and crafts that you could go shopping at Michael's for. But it's something that you could bring to, uh, th that I love to bring to the script. It's, it's, uh, for me, it's a little more than just reading the words. What I wanted to know is when you are working with doing all this, like you talked about, all of your background that you've brought to this. When did you get so excited about audio description? What made you think, hey, this is what I want to do? Oh, there's like three levels to it. There are three phases. Like when I first found out about it, I had an audition. And I went in and I recorded a scene from a movie with uh, an audio description script. And at the end of it, you know, normally when I do an audition, I'm like, oh, I hope I, I book it. In this case, that was that feeling of, oh, I hope my book it was there, but there was this extra element and it was this excitement of, I've never heard of this before. This is amazing. And it combined so many different elements of what I was doing in voiceover in such a beautiful way that that passion, so like on the technical side was really high. And then maybe a few years ago, I started connecting with our audiences on social media and learning what they want and how they would love to have audio description. And it became this extra phase where it's like, oh, okay, I can do this. And finding out how to bring the story to life in a way that the audiences want. And that's been the most rewarding part. 
And now it sounds like um, being a part of the overall conversation, there were over 4,100 audio description tracks available as of early May 2020. That's oh. so exciting. And it keeps on growing that these streaming services are opting into it outside <laughs> of the FCC mandate. So they recognize the value. You're talking about people that are blind or vision impaired. Are they involved in any of the work you do? Yeah, uh, especially now. The, the um, Oh gosh, I, there's so many different directions to go here. That Our blind and low vision audiences have definitely been speaking up about what they want. The, the conversation has changed from does it have it or not, which is such an important conversation, being able to make sure that audio description is as ubiquitous in, and everywhere as closed captioning, that that, that that is a huge element. But the other thing that's happening is the quality and the excellence of audio description, that a lot of companies that provide audio description are going above and beyond to provide the best they can. And with that, it it's making sure that blind and low vision audiences and advisors and guides are involved in at least some part of the creation. There's a company that is uh, owned by a blind, uh, blind owner, and he's been very clear about making sure that he hires disabled actors to do the narration, uh, blind, low vision, or otherwise, and that that kind of inclusion is starting to happen. The other companies are also making sure that their scripts have advisors so that the, um, you know, it's, it's a different experience. It's not a, a sighted person putting on a blindfold for an hour and a half and saying, oh, that's good. There's, there's something else that, that comes into it. And this isn't, um, this is something that's, I think, really important is that for our audiences to, you know, nothing about us without us is more than just uh, checking a box or a, a token uh, quote unquote gift. It's, it's an actual necessity to bring the quality of this work to the standard that our audiences deserve. So what do you learn from the blind community? Oh, great question. And I'm going to do a little segue to answer your question, talking about teaching narration for audio description. The oh, I've, yes. So when I've taught classes, it's mostly uh, voiceover talents who are really excited to learn about it and learn the nuance and what sort of things to technically to uh, to bring their performance to life for an audience. And that's the perfect time to bring in a, a blind or low vision advisor. So they join us usually on like a uh, some sort of audio call where they're listening into the, uh, um, to the samples that the, the talents are giving. And it's such a beautiful two-way street, beautiful in the sense that the, the voice talents are getting instant feedback about, oh, you know, that was a little too much. You, you were too into it, or that was a little too flat, or that really didn't match the scene, or I was, um, I was taken out of the, the... So that kind of feedback, the, uh, the advisor is the director in that sense. So my role outside of giving, you know, some very general basics in the technical side is to facilitate the teaching of our audience, of the, um, of the talent, the voiceover talent being taught by our guide, by our advisor. And it's, it's uh, the feedback that I'm getting from all sides has been, this is what we want. And it, it checks so many boxes for everyone. I want to tell you my creator stuff, you know, like she's so awesome, right? She, what I love about her is like, not only that, she totally brought me to life, which is super fun. And we get to, you know, be this expressive for, you know, showing so much. But, you know, she's, she's vision impaired, which I, you know, everyone knows and, and, you know, created and she's awesome. And, you know, she's, she's so many things to me, but she's so open, you know, and she's, she's an African-American woman and she's over 55 and she encompasses like all this creativity and she built bold blind beauty and she's bringing women of every type and men because you know this year we're doing the men in motion and together and the reason why i bring this up is like how do you see diversity in more than one way in just blindness in this field sure so uh i'm a i'm a sighted white narrator that's that's what i bring to the table and with that i'm learning a lot more about diversity there was a great event that happened i think in 2019 at the television academy where it was a panel on performers with disabilities, and it was also the, the casting people making decisions to bring in people of disabilities, not, ex it, not exclusively for storylines about disability, but about this is a person with a disability who's playing a character that 
happens to have a disability. The story wasn't about the disability. And it was framed so in, in this panel, it was one of the best panels um, on disability that I've, that I've seen. So that is one aspect of diversity. I think another aspect of diversity that we can even talk about within the world of audio description is that there are other narrators who are people of color, women of color, and all sorts of things. And I think that in that world of representation, if you're a blind or low vision audience member, you're going to be listening to this voice for all the things that are happening. And that makes a difference. Being able to hear representation of yourself in that voice of, narr of the narrator is, is super important. And, you know, I, I, I can't speak to much detail about that, but I'm a big proponent of more diversity in this world because it is representation and it's a representation that's, um, that is happening. I, I don't know specifically the, the percentage. It'd be fascinating to find that out. But um, what I do know is that the more diversity, the better, and that nobody loses out on that. One of the things that I'm learning is that it's these little steps that do make a difference. It's not like this big 180 degree mm -hmm. turn that it's like these little, even this conversation right now, I've changed a little bit. It's like, oh yeah, okay, that's another way that we can approach this or little tiny steps. And as more people choose to to make those steps, it's it becomes like a, a really big wave in a way that, that helps um, everybody out. Not just helps, but it just makes it more more diverse in such a beautiful way. If people wanted to get in touch with you to learn more about what you're doing, how could they do that? Oh, there's a few ways. I'm on uh, social media. So Twitter is at Roy Samuelson. I'm also on Instagram at Roy Samuelson, and I do alt text on both of those. On Facebook, I'm pretty active in the audio description discussion group, which is uh, a really lively and engaging kind of positive group of pretty close to 500 people that are both narrators and writers and, and consumers and audience members. It's a really great place to learn more about audio description and see the discussion and how it's growing. It's a lot of great things happening there. And of course, um, there's other places that, uh, um, that I like to, to refer people to, the Audio Description Narrators of America, which is theadna.org, the adna.org and there's a lot of different it's like an imdb list of audio description narrator based on uh contributions from our audiences when they hear someone so um those are the those are the main places i'd like to refer people to i'm abby with bold blind beauty it's been awesome hanging out with you guys and real and keep in touch and we are gonna keep you guys rocking with some more fun stuff and we'll post the links that Roy also references so you can keep in touch and have questions. Have a great one. Hey, make sure you have your stilettos on and your canes tapping. See ya.